Well, we're back for part two of this. Um, I know it's a f it's been a few days since the Oscar nominations, but as I said in that last video, hold on. Did I okay, the camera's a little messed up. There we go. Um, that's at least better, I think. Um, yeah, as I said in my last video, I was going to be way too busy with work to actually uh, tackle the two-parter for a long while, and luckily I'm able to do that now. So... Um, I was able to see the actual nominations. Uh, I wanted to initially do one where maybe if I had enough time I could actually record the video early and just, you know, not have to worry about that, but because it took so long for me to actually have enough time, I just said fuck it, I'll just look at the nominees and form them up and actually uh, get my own opinions on them, and then that way maybe it can be a little bit more of a uh, concise, um, uh, not concise, um, I'm blanking on the word, but basically just a, a better video overall. So, with that, um, with that ramble out of the way, I do want to get into what it ended up being, and I'm going to go in the same order as last time. So, for best makeup and hairstyling for the Oscars, I had predicted, oh, something's wrong with my, oh, I, never mind, I see what I did. Okay, so for best makeup and hairstyling, I predicted that it was going to be Joker, Bombshell, Judy, Downton Abbey, and Little Women. So, I, I was three. I had three of them. So, Bombshell, Joker, and Judy did get nominated. But the ones that I missed out on were 1917 and Maleficent 2, Mistress of Evil. You know, because you got to throw in uh, the the one that's maybe the most likely, but at the same time, it's from a movie that's not Oscar-worthy in any other way, kind of like Suicide Squad was. Um, for this, I, I think Bombshell would win, without a doubt, especially with how much, uh, with how much they were able to make both Sharice Theron and Nicole Kidman look like Megyn Kelly and Gretchen Carlson from Fox News. And... I don't, honestly, you didn't need to do it too much with uh, Sharice Theron, which is good, but still, that, um, for somebody who hasn't been able to see the movie because it hasn't come anywhere near me, I, I, I think just from looking at the trailers, you, you could tell it was like Vice where you could just look at it and you'd say, oh shit, wow, that's actually really, really good, but aside from that, okay, it keeps flipping, um, let me see. Yeah, for what should win, I would say uh, Bombshell, I do agree with that. And then maybe, on an outside chance, you could say that M Maleficent 2, I guess? I mean, you know, I... Well, actually, no, I'm going to I'm gonna switch that. What, what will win will be either Bombshell or Maleficent, and then what should win is, hands down, Bombshell. Okay, so for the next one... Um, oh, actually, no, I forgot. Um, I, I wrote down in my notes, uh, talk about snubs. Um, honestly, from looking at this list, if I had to pick, I'd probably go with Little Women, but I'm not really mad at these choices. And I don't. They made they made sense and are pretty good. And I actually, I kind I'm kind of kicking myself uh, for not thinking about 1917. I personally don't really think about it, I just look at their faces and I think, oh, that's a lot of dirt. I'm like, oh, there's makeup involved, okay. I wasn't even thinking anywhere along those lines, so I'm a bit disappointed in myself. Um, then we had uh, Best Costume Design. I predicted that it would be Joker, Rocket Man, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Downton Abbey, and Little Women. I got three of those right as well. I got Joker, Little Women, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The other two that I missed was Jojo Rabbit and Irishman. Which, I, I honestly feel bad for not thinking about Jojo Rabbit initially. Or at all. I'm kind of... I'm very disappointed in myself for that, actually. Um, so, for what will win, I say either Little Women or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And then what should win, I personally think uh, Little Women should win. Um, as far as snubs, I, I, I personally think Rocket Man because those were some, those were some of the better, more... Um, notable cost, um, costume designs that I've seen all year, especially with a lot of them being based off of Elton John's actual costuming from his early, uh, per, uh, from his early rock career to ones that were made just for the movie. It was just amazing, especially, I keep thinking about, um, the, the, the Dodgers outfit, the sequin 
Dodgers outfit. That one's amazing. Um, after that, okay, we had production design. I predicted that it would be Little Women, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Irishman, and Joker. <clears throat> got three of that as well. Uh, I, I think you'll see, um, I think my average is about three per, or maybe it's closer to four depending. I don't know, we'll see at the end. I probably won't even remember uh, to check this topic, honestly. But what was nominated, I did get The Irishman once upon a time in Hollywood in 1917, but I didn't think about these two. I, I didn't add Jojo Rabbit, and one that I really, I'm really disappointed that I didn't think of was Parasite, because anybody that knows about Parasite, the house that the uh, that the Park family lives in, the um, the richer people, that was built from scratch just for the movie. And that house is amazing. So I'm, I'm kicking myself for not thinking about that either. Um, I'm thinking about what will win. Um, I'm, I'm thinking somewhere along the lines of 1917 and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think one of those will win, but what should win, either 1917, so I'm fine with that, and then Parasite. I'm Again, I'm still kicking myself in the ass for not thinking about the fact that it should, I, I should have mentioned that. And as far as snubs, I, I don't see any snubs. I'm completely fine with this list. Uh, best sound, I'll go through best sound uh, and sound mixing. I won't have too many uh, comments on those because sound isn't something that I necessarily pick out. But I am happy with this one. I only missed one for best sound editing. I had put 1917, Joker, Ford v Ferrari, uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, and, and Endgame. I got, I got it wrong on Endgame. Instead, it was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, for that, I think... I think for this one, it's going to be kind of like um, like when Dunkirk was in. It's going, it, the sound is going to go towards the war film. That's usually how it goes. That's my opinion, though. That's my prediction. Um, and then let me see sound mixing. I had pretty much the same, uh, the exact same list. Or actually, yeah, I did. I had the exact same list as the last one, including Endgame. Uh, that one I got three uh, three right, two wrong. Uh, the ones that I got wrong were Endgame and Rise of Skywalker. It was um, what I was missing was Ad Astra, the single, the only nomination that that movie got, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Which again, I'm not a sound guy. I, you know, I just throw, I, I throw things in there that maybe make sense to me at least. Um, what will win and what should win, I've already said 1917. Uh, for best film editing, this this one's still another hard one for me. I think last year I got fairly lucky. I'd, I'd honestly have to look back. I don't remember what I, uh, what I predicted at that point for them. But best film editing, I, I only got two right. I got Joker and Ford v. Ferrari. Um... I had put 1917, which I thought, you know, because of the fact that it's shot as though it's one continuous shot, maybe they would have added it for film editing, and then I had stuff like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Marriage Story. So the three that I didn't get, I didn't get Parasite, which now looking back at it, I'm like, okay, yeah, that actually makes sense. And then The Irishman and Jojo Rabbit. Um, what I think will win, I, I honestly have the feeling that this will go to uh, Ford v Ferrari, and what I think should win, it's honestly that. Um, if I had to give snubs, being somebody who hasn't seen 1917 and actually won't get the opportunity unless it shows up in my uh, in my theater next month, which they don't project out the uh, the show times very far. Uh, the latest that I can see it is uh, is the 31st of January. Um, I. I what was that? I think that was a snub. So, same for Marriage Story. Uh, fuck that movie. Um, for cinematography, I only got one wrong, which I'm happy with. So the ones that I got right were Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Ford v Ferrari in 1917. I had put Little Women because I just had a feeling, but this one I should have seen coming, but I had a feeling that it was going to get snubbed across the board. The Lighthouse in its only Oscar nomination. Now, I don't think it'll win... I, I personally don't think it'll win at all, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sad about that because I really did enjoy The Lighthouse, even though I, I left the theater like, what the hell did I just watch? Um, 
Though, I think what will win and should win is 1917. Again, as somebody who has not seen the movie, I'm just going off of conjecture. And then, snubs. Again, I, I actually, I thought that Lighthouse was going to be the snub. So I don't have any for this one. Um, so, best visual effects. I always get this I always get this category right and that's because I'm a visual guy. Irishman 1917 Avengers Endgame Star Wars Rise of Skywalker and Lion King. I got that out of the park. Uh what will win and what should win are the same thing for me. Um I'm just putting 1917 and Lion King, but I'm edging it out more to Lion King specifically. But we'll see how that goes. I'll make another video in the future closer to when the Oscars actually are. And I'll, I'll give my my final choices, and then we'll see how I do. Uh, best original song. I had two added because I thought, eh, Disney's gonna mostly control the entire thing. Um, I was I wasn't right, but also um, I got three correct. I had Into the Unknown from Frozen Two. I'm gonna love me again. One of my favorite original songs from the last year that I keep playing on repeat every once in a while on Spotify from Rocket Man, um, and then Stand Up from Harriet, because I heard a few things from that. The two that I didn't get, and I'm actually surprised that I saw this one, it, there's the song I'm Standing With You from Breakthrough, which it took me a while to realize what movie that was. That was that uh, Christian faith-based movie that came out really, really early in the year. It's actually, fun fact, uh, from what I read, it's the very first Fox film that was distributed by Disney. I mean, it's a fun fact, but we'll all forget about that movie after a while. But I, I me personally, I don't give too much credence to Christian faith-based movies because most of them aren't good on filmmaking levels. They're more just to tell sermons. But again, that's just me. If you enjoy Christian faith-based films, uh, good on you. More power to you. I just I can't get into them at all. Um, as somebody who uh, doesn't follow a particular religion, but was also raised on Christian values. Um, so, I'm standing with you from Breakthrough. Again, early movie that came out this year. It took me a while to remember what that was. And then, the other one was, I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story 4. Which, I'll be honest, I don't remember that song. I don't think, um, I think at that point, whenever it showed up in the movie, it was probably at, uh, at the end in the end credits. I, I don't remember it at all. I, I actually kind of feel bad for that. Um, what will win and what should win, I'm Gonna Love Me Again from Rocket Man. I'm, I'm unwavering in my support for that song. Because that, that song best encapsulates why the movie is so important to me and why it was... What number was it on my list? I I'm sorry, I've already forgotten, like, my, um... I've, I've forgotten the placement for my top ten films of 2019 list, but I know that Rocket Man was really high up. I think it was even, like, number five or something like that, or maybe something close to that. But, I don't know, just... I'm not really somebody who focuses on original songs, so... Oh, it's an email. So... You know, I, I wasn't going into this thinking, like, I got this locked in. I'm just like, I'm probably going to get the majority right, and I did. For original score, I, I'm, I'm happy with this uh, for the most part. I, I got four right. Uh, I predicted Marriage Story, uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, Little Women, and Joker. I got one wrong. Uh, the one that I missed was 1917, and by that I mean that was the one that was actually nominated, which I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know how the score is. It could it could be one of the best. But as somebody who... who has heard the scores for the other movies, I'm like, okay, yeah, I understand why these are here. Um, first, I'll go into what will win and what should win. Um, what should win is Joker, but well, what will win, I actually think it's... Uh, it could go to either uh, 1917 or Joker. I just have a feeling for the 1917. And plus, Joker was one of my favorite scores of this year. The one that got snubbed was my act was my absolute favorite score. I don't understand why Avengers Endgame was not included in this because that that in my opinion, and again, this is subje this is a subjective opinion. I'm not saying that there's anything objective about it. 
but that was that was the best score of the entire year, especially like, and I'm not even just uh, narrowing it down to all of the grander moments, or even even my favorite scene of the year, which was the portal scene. That just I don't I don't know how how best to describe it. I just I personally think it was snubbed, but honestly, it's the the list looks solid. Besides that, um, oh, best animated feature. I've mentioned this before on my channel. The best animated feature category is completely pointless. I don't agree with this. I, I don't agree with this category existing at all. Simply because it gives it gives the Oscars another reason to snub very uh, deserving very deserving uh, animated films from being nominated for Best Picture, which it hasn't stopped them in the past. There have been two um, Best Picture nominees ever since they started this category in the Best Picture uh, section, but I, I don't know. It's just... Uh, it, it just... It's led to a lot of random shit. Like, for instance, I thought that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was one of the best movies of the year that it came out, and yet... All it, all it got was Best Animated Feature. Did it deserve it? Yes, it was the best animated movie of that year. But I know a lot of people thought that it was one of the best movies of the year, regardless of what genre or what type of filmmaking it was. Anyway, that's just a rant on my part. And plus, they snubbed, they, they snubbed the Lego movie years ago, and that was the best animated movie of that year. So I don't understand... I don't understand that at all. Um, film it. Oh, okay. Oh, mine, mine skipped down a, a low ways. Okay. Uh, best anime feature. So what I predicted, uh, I got three right. I got Missing Link, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, and Toy Story 4. The ones that I missed, I didn't. I don't know what these movies are. And or, No, let me rephrase. The first one, I don't know, and it's called I Lost My Body. Not familiar with that one. And then the other one is a Netflix film called Klaus, which I've heard is good, but I still haven't seen it. And uh, because it's it's like a Santa Claus kind of uh, movie, or at least from my understanding, it's uh, Saint Nicholas um, related. I don't. I, I feel like that's a movie where I wouldn't get that much out of if I watched it now. But if I watch it next year, then I'll just be like, oh wow, okay. Or I'll just be like, eh, okay. So yeah, I, I missed those two. Um, for this one, I don't know. I have... This one's a bit weird for me, because the what will win and should win, the what will win, I'm not even uh, certain about. It's it's based off of an opinion that I have. I think that Missing Link will win, and that's because for many times over the past few years, Disney has been the reigning champion when it comes to best animated features. And I have a feeling that this year they're going to try to uh, break off from that ideal, and then they'll give it to Missing Link, which in itself is an okay movie. It's not one of Leica's best. Their best movie should have been, um, should have actually won, the um, what was it, Kubo and the Two Strings? That one either should have won or, you know, was at least a close second to Zootopia, because at that point I was like, okay, I kind of get it. I kind of get why that one instead of that one. But because of that, I'm not as certain on it. What I think should win is Toy Story 4. That was one of my favorite movies of last year, without a doubt. That that broke my top ten list. Why does it keep scrolling? <laughs> um, so for best adapted screenplay, usually with these I get pretty close, especially. Um, so with uh, adapted screenplay, I had, I had predicted... Uh, I got four right. I got Little Women... Jojo Rabbit, uh, Irishman, and Joker. What I had put was Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, because it was one of my favorite sc scripts the entire year. But it got replaced by a movie that I still haven't seen called The Two Popes, which I should uh, I should get on onto actually watching it, but at the same time, I'd rather, I'd rather focus on the Best Picture nominees so I can get that out as quick as possible before the, uh, the Oscars hit. But I... Because 1917's not coming around here, and 
I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to finish the list. The other ones I've already seen, though, so that shouldn't be too hard to actually get videos out for them. Um, for Best Original Screenplay, again, I had four nominees. I got one wrong. The ones that I got right were Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Knives Out, which I was really happy that they actually got a nomination for that. Uh, Marriage Story, my, my favorite original screenplay of the year. And then 1917. My wife kept saying that it's not an original screenplay, and she made me uh, doubt myself. And then, and then the, the list came out, and I'm like, yeah, suck it. <laughs> um... I don't know what I was trying to do there. I had I had no game uh I had no end game plan. Um so wait. Oh, it skipped up again. I hate my phone so much. Uh and then yeah, 1917. The one that I added, I I said that I had a feeling that the farewell was going to get um recognition at least in this category, which I for those of you who've seen my review, I don't care too much for The Farewell. I don't think it's as good as people say it is. I understand why people like it, but at the same time, I, I wasn't particularly impressed with the movie. Um, instead, it was replaced by a more deserving foreign film, and that was Parasite, which I think was very deserving. I should have honestly thought about that, but I wasn't exactly sure. I didn't know if you could nominate a foreign film for that kind of thing. I know, I know that it's been not, uh, foreign films have been nominated many times for best director, uh, best picture, and sometimes best actor. Um, and then, did I say director or yeah? I I didn't know when that um, that actual thing ends, but I don't know. I. I guess this shows that I'm still not uh, aware of how the workings work. Honestly, in the next year, I need to actually look back into the history and figure the these things out myself so that I'm more prepared for these kind of videos. Uh, best foreign film? I had said that uh, Parasite was the obvious winner, and I don't know enough... Um, I don't know enough foreign films to actually do a legitimate list, but that I also... Um, I predicted that maybe A Portrait of a Lady on Fire would be one of them, so the only one I got was Parasite. Sadly, um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which my wife has seen, and she said that she absolutely loved it, and it was being lauded by critics and audiences on the award circuit. A lot of pe I know a lot of people thought that maybe it would actually be nominated, but instead we got Parasite, Pain and Glory from, uh, from Spain, Les Miserables from France, which is completely different from the book or the musical. I don't know what it is, I just know it's not that, it's more of a modern day thing. Uh, Honeyland from North uh, Macedonia, and then Corpus Christi from Poland. So, that's those right there. Best Supporting Actress, I got three. Um, the ones that I did get were Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell, Laura Dern for Marriage Story, uh, and then Florence Pugh for li uh, Little Women. That one I was really happy with because I, I love Florence Pugh. I, I know, uh, shit, actually, no, I'll, I'll leave that in a second. Um, <clears throat> who will win? It's probably going to be Laura Dern. It's been her year as far as, um, as far as wins. Just so far, I have a feeling that this is her year for uh, for an Oscar. I don't remember off the top of my head if she has been nominated before. No, she's probably been nominated, but I don't know if she's ever won one. So I don't know. I have to look at that later. I don't. I, it's probably not best if I start looking things up on here and just throwing off the entire pacing of of this video, which there is none because I don't know how to pace things correctly. Um, the ones that I missed. So I put Nicole Kidman for Bombshell, and then I had a feeling that the Oscars were going to cave and give a nomination to Jennifer Lopez, even though I didn't think she deserved it in any way, despite the fact that it was at least her best performance. It was just, you know, it's a Golden Globe, nomin uh, it's a Golden Globe no nomination at best. Or maybe, I don't know, MTV Movie Awards or Kids' Choice Awards from Nickelodeon, whatever. No, that movie would not be seen by kids, or at least it, it shouldn't be. Um, <laughs> so, where was I? Okay. Okay, I've already lost my train of thought. What was I doing? 
Oh, sorry. Um, so the ones that I... Those were the two that I missed. Bombshell did get another one, and it's for Margot Robbie. And from what I've seen, a lot of people who've seen the movie, even critics, are like, no, no, because... I guess Margot Robbie is, like, good in the movie, but she's nowhere near the talent that, uh, or no, she's nowhere near the performance that Nicole Kidman gave herself, so they're a little disappointed with that. And then this one, I was kind of surprised. I wasn't expecting this to happen. It's happened a few times before, but Scarlett Johansson got nominated, and this isn't even, uh, like, this isn't even the only nomination that she gets in the entire, in the entire movie. Or, not movie, but the uh, in the entire award show, which is actually kind of cool. I'm fine with this. But, yeah, who, who will win is Laura Dern. But who should win, I actually... I think it's between Kathy Bates and Lawrence Pugh. Personally, I think that Kathy Bates gave the overall best performance of the year as far as supporting actress. But Florence Pugh came so close, it's like so close that I, I wouldn't be mad if she won, but I, I have a feeling that she's not going to this year, which actually makes me sad. Um, as far as snubs, actually, yeah, I kind of, I kind of mentioned that, um, Kidman should have honestly been nominated instead, and, again, uh, unpopular opinion, but Jennifer Lopez was not going to get an Oscar nomination. She was not deserving, sorry. Uh, for Best Supporting Actor, I got everything right except for one. The ones I got right were Pesci and Pacino for Irishman, uh, Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, and then I initially put Willem Dafoe for Lighthouse because I, th I actually thought this would be the one category that would, would no doubt actually have a nomination for him. I was wrong with that. It was for another movie that I still haven't seen. Again, it was The Two Popes, Anthony Hopkins. Which, again, I haven't seen it, so no um, no comment on that. Who will win and who should win? Brad Pitt. This is this is Brad Pitt's year. He deserves it. He, sh he should have an Oscar for acting this year. Because he, he's already got a few Oscars for producing. He just, you know, he needs... He deserves... An acting nom for the, or he deserves an acting win. Sorry, my throat's starting to hurt, so my head's starting to go a little loopy. Um, snubs Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe was a tour de force, and honestly, he usually is. I've never seen a bad performance from him, even in bad movies, or at least bad in my opinion. He's still he's still fantastic, without a doubt. And this this was no exception for Lighthouse. It was a really good movie, like really, really good, and an even better performance from Willem Dafoe. Uh, shit, hang on. Okay, best actress, again, missed one. Okay, so maybe my, maybe my average is more like four, uh, four out of five for each thing. So what I put was uh, Renee Zellweger for Judy, Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story, Little Win uh, sorry, Shersha Ronan for Little Women, and Charisse Theron for Bombshell. The one that I got wrong, I had a feeling that they were. All I still had a feeling that they were gonna cave and give a nomination to Aquafina for The Farewell, which again was a good performance, but nowhere near Oscar caliber. This one, this was a movie that I never got a chance to see. We had a chance uh, for a little bit. I think I mentioned it in my last part, uh, or at least the first part of this. Um, me and my wife got sick when we were supposed to watch Harriet, and we stayed home instead and played video games together. It was nice. But, yeah, we never got to see Harriet. And Cynthia Erivo, I believe her name is pronounced, she ended up getting the nomination, which, from what I understand, is very deserving. Uh, I don't think she'll win, though, but I'm glad that she at least, you know, somebody somebody like her got um, got a nomination. I've, I've been impressed with her and her career, especially um, on Broadway with The Color Purple. Fantastic actress, and I'm glad that, you know, she got nominated. She seems like a person who, who deserves this kind of nomination. Um... As far as who will win and who should win, Renee Zellweger will win. This is her year, without a doubt. Uh, really, who should win? Anyone else, uh, despite the fact that I did love uh, Zellweger's performance in Judy. 
But it, honestly, my main picks for winning would go to either Shuri Theron or ScarJo, but that's just me. Um, other than that, I can't think of any snubs. Oh, actually, Lapita Nyong'o. Everybody's talking about P Lapita Nyong'o. I didn't like Us, but her performance in that was was a sensation, without a doubt. Why does my... Oh, God. Ah. It freaked out. What the hell? Stopped unexpectedly. Error. 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 <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Hang on. I gotta scroll back down. Okay, so best actress. So for best actor, I actually got two wrong. I had put... Joaquin Phoenix as Joker, Adam Driver in Marriage Story, and Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Those got nominated. The ones that I put, I thought Adam Sandler, from what I heard, I just... And, and plus, my, my wife won't shut up about the movie. I, I know that I'll be able to watch it in two weeks, so that's actually kind of cool. But my wife has not shut up about that movie. She loved it, and she loved... Adam Sandler's performance, and she does not like Adam Sandler at all, so that's saying something. Um, instead of him and Robert De Niro, I thought Robert De Niro was going to get a performance because... or get a performance. I thought that he was going to get a nomination because, I will say, I have seen The Irishman. I thought it was an okay movie, but Robert De Niro's really fucking good in that movie. He's the best that he's been in a few years. Um, but... Uh, instead, they're replaced by Jonathan Price from, again, Two Popes. Still haven't seen it. Don't know how, how good he is or Anthony Hopkins. And then Antonio Banderas for that Spanish film, Pain and Glory, which I kept hearing a lot of good things about when it was in the theaters. I just, I didn't know what it was until after. Hell, I still don't even know what the what the story is. But honestly, Antonio Banderas is a, is a great actor, and so is Jonathan Price, so they probably do deserve it, but... Snubs, uh, De Niro and Sandler, but also Robert Pattinson gave a, a, a great performance too in, um, in in the Lighthouse. So there's three snubs right there, in my opinion. Um, okay, last two, last two. Uh, my my throat's starting to hurt. <clears throat> so for best director, I missed one. I put Noah Baumbach as uh. As the director for Marriage Story, I thought that he was going to get it. But um, the ones that I did get right, Sam Mendes for 1917, Martin Scorsese for The Irishman, Bong Joon-ho for Parasite, good on him, and then Taika Waititi for Jojo Rabbit. That one I just had I had a feeling about. Wait. Did I get one wrong? Hold on. Hang on, I think I I think I made a error. Hold on. Oh, never mind. I got three wrong. I <sighs> Taika Waititi didn't get uh didn't get uh the director. God damn it! I in my list I forgot to put Quentin Tarantino. Either that or I meant to do that. I don't know, because I I personally didn't think that uh, Quentin Tarantino's direct direction in the movie was as great as it could have been, but again, I'm a person who didn't really care for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's my least favorite, um, it's my least favorite Tarantino film. So no, I, I missed Noah Baumbach and Taika Waititi, but, um, what was really nominated, so Martin Scorsese, Sam Mendes, and Bong Joon-ho, Quinn Tarantino was nominated, okay, and then Todd Phillips for Joker. I, w I actually wasn't I didn't see that coming, especially with the, uh, the the Directors Guild. They didn't nominate him, and I get that it's a it's a separate system in a way. But at the same time, I, I honestly wasn't expecting it. I think he deserves it without a doubt, so I'm fine with that. Wait, wait. Oh God, sorry. I'm getting I'm getting a bit tired because I'm still I'm adjusting my sleep schedule. So this is how this is one way that I'm getting through it. And also, um, my my phone keeps like scrolling through different things because I looked back up and it went to the um, it went to visual effects and I'm like, wait, what have I been doing this entire time? Um, so yeah, there was that. Uh, who will win? I think Tarantino is gonna win. I don't think he deserves it. 
but they're probably going to give it to him anyway. But who should win? Uh, from my understanding, I, I think Sam Mendes, just from all the things that I'm hearing about it. And again, this is conjecture from somebody who has not seen the movie. Uh, snubs. Noah Baumbach. He, he would have been my pick for should win. But he wasn't even nominated, so I'm a little sad about that. And then, uh, I actually I actually wrote something down for this. Uh, so, personally, I don't see them as snubs, but... Uh, personally, I don't see snubs, but honestly, I knew Scorsese would be nominated. Although, personally, since I saw The Irishman a few days ago, I think it was fine. It was just simply a formulaic uh, Scorsese film, so it doesn't necessarily... I don't necessarily think that he deserved a nomination, so we could have used uh, we could have used it for another nominee, and we could have added Greta Gerwig. And wait, oh, I started I started in the wrong place. Okay, sorry. Basically, I'm talking about the whole uh, oh, there's no women directors, and like that stupid bitch from uh, from the nominations who was sitting right next to uh, John Cho who said, congratulations to all those men. I'm like, oh, God. I don't know. Whenever you, whenever you show whenever you show your feminism like that, I don't personally like it because it, it it's more like you're coming across with, oh, these guys aren't deserving at all. We should, get, we should have only women or something. And it gets really confusing, and I don't understand how somebody can be so hostile to everyone to this kind of thing, but anyway, that's just me, and if you're mad at my opinion, that's fine, I, I accept that, and you, you know, your opinion is valid, or not valid, it doesn't, it, a lot of it doesn't matter, like, it doesn't matter what my opinion is, it doesn't matter, matter what your opinion is, but at the same time, it does, for both of us, um, but it, with as many noms as, as Greta Gerwig's film got, it would honestly make sense. The whole point of a movie is that it's a director's end vision, and their um, <clears throat> it's their product overall. And not to mention the fact that she actually wrote the film, so that that part helps as well. Uh, hang on, where the hell did I put it? But yeah, no, I just get sick and tired whenever um, people are pointing out uh, whenever there are nominees in a category for any show that not just one, um, it, that it doesn't have any women or ethnicities or both, and suddenly that means that they're not being inclusive, and I'm just, I'm not saying that there has never been an agenda in Hollywood, I'm just saying that, you know, if we as a society keep complaining, then it will end up to where maybe the wrong people are nominated only because of their gender and their skin tone. So, exactly what the media fears, but instead of staying away from more white men. But, hey, if all the best movies in a year are made by white men, who cares? We'll just wait until the next year and hope that uh, that a female um, actually gets, you know, gets a chance to make a, the be one of the best films of the year. But again, this is coming from the idea that I don't think Scorsese deserved a nomination in hell, even Quentin Tarantino. I don't think either of them did. But that's just me. I'm going to stop bitching about it. Best Picture is the final one, and I did it out of a possible ten. I got all of them right. The only one that I missed was that extra one, because I thought maybe... Because they are able to go from uh, five to ten pictures in a year ever since 2009, thereabouts, I, I thought, hey, it is possible that they could give uh, 10 films, but no, they did 9. The only one that I missed was Knives Out, and honestly, for me, despite the fact that it was in my top three favorite movies of the year, I, I didn't think it had as good a chance to be nominated, so it was at the very low part. So, Ford v. Ferrari, Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Um, so for what will win, I, I personally think it'll either be 1917, which has been winning a lot of awards, especially things like Best Picture, like just Best uh, Motion Picture, anything like that, or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, because that one's also been winning a lot too. Personally, what should win... For me, I have three answers. 
Um, I'd say Marriage Story because it is the best of the best. It's my favorite movie of last year, hands down, without a doubt. Hell, before I even started this video, I was watching it again, a movie that it should naturally depress me, but for some reason its catharsis makes me feel alive again. Um, and then the other one is for relevancy, Joker and Parasite, simply because both movies tackle an issue that's been, that's going on all over the world, and Parasite is praised for it, and yet Joker is seen as a radical's, uh, like, beacon of hope, which is really stupid, and I'm just referring to the idea that the, what is it, that the space between low class and, and uh, like, upper class is getting wider and wider, and just how it's it's becoming an issue all over where people are starting to rebel against the rich simply because of how bad it is getting so for that I, I personally I don't think the two of them will actually win but I think that they should as well as marriage story but that's beside the point anyway that's all my stuff I'm sorry that I've been rambling for a while a lot of it had nothing to do with this but you know what I just this this is a place where film fan c fans can actually talk and discuss things, and actually it felt kind of cathartic to complain about stuff like that. But anyway, that's all of my stuff. Uh, personally, I'm, as much as I understand a lot of the nominees and where it all went, and I honestly had a couple of um, categories where I got it almost right or I got it perfect on the dot, I'm not too impressed with this year. Okay, sorry, that was another email. I'm not too impressed with this year, if I'm being honest. I will I will try to watch the award show, but I probably won't be able to since I'm in another country, and I wouldn't know how to get it anyway, because for, for some reason I can never get it on uh, Hulu right after. But I can get the Tonys, which is weird. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for letting me ramble. Like I said a little bit before the Oscar Awards, or the Academy Awards actually take place, I will be making one last video, and it will just be on my uh, winning predictions. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And all that's left to say is farewell until my next video, all of you casual moviegoers and movie fans alike, and keep on being awesome.